Hey y'all, this is David, WK4DS with Ham Radio Today. And to, what I'm going to do today is show you how I tune a telescoping vertical antenna for the HF bands. So I've come over here to the Ascalon Road, Cloudland Canyon is in a park. They call it the connector trail, but it's really part of the park. That's why it has a parking fee required and all of that stuff. But I'm going to set up right here and do a pot activation, and I'm going to set up my 213-inch whip. I'm going to share with you how I tune it to do band changes. And I can get into the weeds on tuning it. Sometimes I do. But for the most part, I like to tune it and get it close and then hop on the band. So... With that, okay, to make this happen a little faster, I'm going to probably run this uh, footage of me setting up the antenna in fast forward. Okay, I want to show you, this is a 213 inch whip. That's a little over 17 feet long. When I fully extend it, it's resonant just below the 20 meter band, around 12 megahertz normally. Okay, I have some radials in here that I'll use. I have two in particular, and they're about 17 feet long each. And that gives me enough counterpoise to be able to tune against them and get it, it gets my, Impedance to in between 50 and 60 ohms reactance. Re impedance and re you know the, the reactance and the resistance of the antenna work out to around 50 to 60 ohms usually. I literally just kick them out on the ground and then twist the ends up and I run one in both directions, one in each direction, however you say that. I don't get them taught to start with. Then I'll bring them up here to this ground lug I've put on my antenna mount. Stick both wires under it and tighten it down on them. Now I came in behind the vertical element. There we go. Now I've got both of them connected. But the next thing I want to do is pull it out to where it's snug and it runs sloping up to the base of the antenna. This angle generates an impedance. And by adjusting the tension of these wires, I can adjust that impedance angle. I figured this out over time. There we go. Here's my SWR plot from just plugging the antenna in with one element compressor. There might be two at the top of the antenna that didn't get deployed. But at the, the current condition, we're at 51.86 ohms of impedance. And it's resonant at 15.302 megahertz with a 1.183 to one SWR. Okay, so I want to lower that down to the 20 meter band or raise it to the 15, uh, 17 meter band so that I can get on the air with one of those. And that means I got to either shorten it or lengthen it one way or the other. Well, I'm going to adjust the radials to get that to see what that does. Adjusting the radials looks like this. Grab the weight, collapse it into the truck some. All right, I've only changed one. I wonder what our SWR looks like now or our frequency, it lowered it. So you can't see it on this camera because of the way I've got the system set up. But our frequency now is 14.58 megahertz. Let's go drop the other one. Pick this weight up, collapse that one down too. See now they're they're dropping at a much steeper angle, but they're still planed out with the same amount of electrical length. By changing that angle, we change the frequency of resonance. Yeah, see now, well, let me change the camera position. Okay, so by doing that, as you can see, we're at 57.3 to 58 ohms of impedance at 14.168 that's the deepest part of the null it's wide enough that i don't really have to super worry about it from here i'm at 1.38 1 to 1 impedance or swr everything about this is completely usable i don't know if you can see it or not in the video but there's the vertical and it goes all the way up to basically right there and then i have those two radials connected and they slope down and run to the ground 
And like I was saying, I'm adjusting resonance by adjusting the angle of this radial and how it's connected to the truck. These two radials with this whip work really well together. But yeah, you can see it's about a 45 degree angle there on each one now, maybe even a little steeper, maybe 50 degrees. And then I just run the excess straight out. And of course they do interact with the truck body. So if I move that radial this way, it'll change the readings on the uh, VNA. So I try to continue, I try to run them straight out from the mount in a, you know, parallel to the truck or perpendicular, whatever that term is. That will give me an adjustable system that I can kind of tune without the need of an antenna tuner. It's really nice because a lot of the smaller radios don't have antenna tuners built in. And a lot of the older small portable HF radios don't have antenna tuners at all. Like none of these Tentex I'm running have one. And you don't have to have one. If the antenna can be adjusted, it's, it's got its own tuner built into it. Seems simple enough to me. But I'm going to use the Tentex Scout because I've been using it a good bit here lately. And I've kind of got comfortable with the radio. I'm going to get it out. Get out the 20 meter band module. Oh, it's in it. And I'm going to get to 17 and 15 as well because that's the only ones I'm going to mess with. I'm probably going to stick to CW today so I won't bother with the side band. I have my power cord. And there we go. Now I do have my common mode choke that I've made and I'm going to put that in to keep any stray RF that comes back on the coax from getting into the radio. And then I also have my keying cable has a common mode choke built into it as you can see. That's going to go into the straight key socket mainly because I'm going to run an, ele an external electronic keyer and I'm going to use the ham gadgets pico keyer All right, that was me working into YC, and I um, did it with the tuning that I did on the 213-inch whip. No antenna tuner at all. Just plug straight into the radio with a common mode choke to make sure that I don't have any common mode currents coming in. But as you can see, the, the antenna works great. Uh, that was in New York State from here with I don't know how many watts, like 40 or 45 I backed off the power a little bit just so I don't strain these really old final transistors. Another cheat code, if you didn't notice, was I turned the volume down on the radio, and I do that because internal noise in the audio amplifier chain will give you a lot of hiss on the speaker, and the high frequencies are the first things to get attenuated if you turn the volume down. And the CW will kind of soak to the surface, they say, and you'll be able to hear it better. Yeah, it's low, so you have to kind of have it quiet in the vehicle. But if I'm here by myself... Okay, I've come out here to the back of the truck, and I've shortened the vertical for 15 meters. And I got it to where it was a little bit too short, so I straightened out my uh, radials, my two radials I've got here, and got them kind of taut and brought the angle back up. And that changed the frequency and pushed it back up into the... The operational area of the CW portion of 15 meters at about 21.4.04 megahertz. And now it's ready to use on 15, and it was that quick. Uh, I just plugged the Nano VNA in the truck, got it on, and got it adjusted to where I could watch the frequency. 
and I set it like the bottom end since I'm tuning up in the band I'll set it to like 18 as the bottom and 21.5 as the high and that's because I'm current I was I was already on 17 meters which is 18.1 megahertz roughly so I could see that I was already there so when I made my adjustments I could see that null shift across the VNA to the 15 meter band and as I shorten it it'll move further up the band and you can kind of watch it from graphically move that null and by adjusting the radials I can move the null deeper or higher and change the SWR and it works it works really well once you kind of get used to this working with this kind of an antenna you never need a tuner it you literally just tinker with it about two minutes and you're on air it's really it's really a lot easier than you'd think <clears throat> And just like that, we're finished. Uh, successful activation, 31 calls in the log. I got some, most of them on 20 meters, a few on 17 and one on 15. I did get a 15 meter contact out of the deal today, but 15 was open pretty well, but there just wasn't anybody there. That's kind of the way it's been here lately. A lot of people will look at the space weather programs or apps or whatever, predictions, whatever you call that, forecast and they just won't even bother is what i've seen and occasionally somebody will wander up there they'll see me spotted on 15 they'll come get me and then he'll leave i'm assuming but i could hear some dx to start with and it kind of faded out the band was open to europe for a few minutes i, was, I almost worked my way into trying to call one because one was calling cq when i just got tuned up and just as soon as i got ready and got my logbook ready and started to transcribe their call sign they quit <laughs> so all right now i appreciate y'all sticking around to the end if you haven't done it yet the like button subscribes right down there if you like the channel and all and until i see you next time 73 this is david with wk40s and ham radio today see y'all later bye bye